a lot of people think that this police interceptor is not my car and I just uh, took a picture next to a random police car. Throughout my life, I owned four cars. Toyota truck, Mazda Miata, Mercedes-Benz, 30-year-old gas guzzler, and of course, P7B, aka P71, aka Crown Victoria. So let me tell you about uh, the most important of them all, the police interceptor Crown Victoria. Out of all cars I've ever owned, it's my most favorite car, like hands down. There's so many bad things I can say about that car. There's so many great things I can say about the star, but the most important part is the memories that I made of that car. The, the car was incredible. Comfortable, it was loud, and it was the fastest car on the road. The reason why the fastest because everybody else was going under speed limit every time they would see me in the mirror because they would think that I'm a police officer. I would go out and the cars would just immediately slow down because they would assume that I'm a cop. The car didn't have any modern features. In fact, the radio looked older than your grandpa's. I had to pull that thing out and I had to put my own radio in it just so it, it could be useful, usable. In case you want to know what the radio looked like, this is the, the highest resolution image uh, I could find of the radio. This is what it looked like, roughly. That's kind of radio that thing had. For the record, it's a 2010 police car, but the, the thing had like features of a car from the 90s. And that was the best part about it. The car did not even have working doors. I kid you not. It didn't have remote and the back doors, you could only open them from the outside. So sometimes I would drive my friends and I would forget them in the back seat because they, ca they can't get out because it's a police car. So I would drive my friends around. I would park it in the parking lot. I would walk away from the car and I'm like, wait, where's my friends? And then I just see them like giving me the look. <laughs> from, from the car and the, the car was also tinted tinted to a legal level the windows were so dark you couldn't see anything at night i'm not even kidding like you know if i wanted to take a look to the left or right at night i would need to roll down the windows i don't know if it's really visible on this picture hold on let me let me pull up my uh picture of it you could see the front compared to the sides you see how it's, how tinted the sides are <laughs> The car brought a lot of great memories, uh, from the time when I almost got arrested for, to the time when my friend crushed it. But we'll get to those stories very soon. The car was a head turner, complete head turner. I mean, not just at the parking lot, but also people would stop at the red light next to me, roll down through a window and ask me if I'm a cop or if I stole the car. It was a cumulative occurrence and it was so much fun. And the car was built like a tank. And so let me explain. Ford Crown Victoria is the last car in the world that is a body on frame. In other words, if the car gets in kind of like a, in like a, in a accident or like crashes into something or like a, there's a pit maneuver, it doesn't damage the internal components. So it's, it was easy to repair and it was easy to maintain. The thing was super spacious. It may not seem that way, but this car is giant. It had horrible blind spots and it was spacious. You could fit at least four people in a trunk. The trunk was massive. The back seats, comfortable. Sitting in that car was like sitting on a couch because it had like, it didn't have any leather seats. It had cloth seats and those seats were like actual like couch. There was also a funny story about this seat, but we'll get, we'll get to that. The car was very loud and let me explain to you why. Two reasons. First reason, since it was a police car, it didn't have any kind of civilian version uh, features, such as like soundproofing, and it had a V8. The same V8 engine they put in Mustangs at the time. Freaking Mustangs! Uh, frankly, not, you know, the, the fastest Mustangs and not the Mustangs that aged the best, but like same engine. That thing was a straight up a tank. I'm not even kidding, by the way. Somebody put a tank engine in the Crown Vic on YouTube. We might look, look it up. Somebody put a freaking tank engine in that car and it worked. I'm not kidding. I learned uh, a lot uh, how to work on cars thanks to it. It was a very simple car. I never worked on cars before the Crown Vic. How did you get the car? Great question. Let me tell you how I got it in the first place. I was looking for a car for a pretty long time, just in general, because Uber is very expensive and, you know, uh, Scott couldn't always drive me and like I, uh, not so many of my friends actually had a car and stuff like that. And so the idea of having a police car has always been like very attractive to me. In fact, they actually go really cheap on, uh, on our Auctions. The police departments, they host auctions where you can get a bunch of retired vehicles for dirt cheap, if you're lucky. But the problem is, it's like, first of all, you need to get lucky. Second thing, you need to know when the auction is happening. Then you need to happen to be at the auction and you have to compete with a bunch of other people who buy those Crown Vicks and resell them. At the time, I used to live in California and any decent non-beat up Crown Vic used to go for about $10,000. And frankly, that was before the uh, car crisis that uh, like, you know, used car uh, prices like skyrocketed. But at the same time, they were going for dirt cheap anywhere else. Like you could buy it like in, let's say some in mid 
invest for like maybe three to five thousand dollars. Why is it 10k in California? Every single time I would message somebody when I would see like a decent price, they'd be like, oh, it's sold out. They would sell out the same day. So when I moved in Las Vegas and I saw a 2010 Crown Victoria with about 100,000 miles for just a few thousand dollars, I met up with a guy immediately. For the record, 2011 was the last production year of the car. And 2010, anecdotally, is the most reliable year of the Crown Victoria, according to like consumer reports or whatever those websites are. So I was like, 2010, under 100,000 miles, few thousand dollars? Let's get it. So we met up uh, at a police station, which was kind of funny because we have a bunch of uh, like uh, new uh, Ford Explorers everywhere. And here this guy arrives in a Crown Vic. For non-American viewers, uh, nowadays we have um, Ford Explorers, giant SUVs as the new police cars instead of the Crown Vics. The new cars the police uses in like in the US. You want to hear the irony? It's more efficient. This giant freaking SUV is more efficient than the Crown Vic. That just kind of shows you like how old this thing is like you know outdated it was late evening because like we we decided to meet up the same same day the guy was busy it was late evening and it started raining so i didn't get to inspect the car much but you know it was running it, ma it made a funny v8 sound the guy was pretty honest about everything that was you know uh he replaced in it it was like some fuel injectors i think but i made a discovery for the record police cars at least the Crown Victoria police cars. They track idle hours. As you can imagine, police idles in their cars all the time. The car's uh, engine is almost turned on, almost always turned on, but they're just not driving and they're just waiting, right? So they can like take off really quick. So when you buy a Crown Victoria, generally speaking, you don't want to have a car of more than 5,000 idle hours. You know how many idle hours this thing had? 8,000. And in case you want to like get a general idea how bad it is so, so if you want to make a conversion one idle hour equals roughly 30 miles so technically the car had 250,000 extra miles of idle use and the guy clearly didn't know about that because uh he was really confused he was like i didn't know my car could do that like to show that like you know the number and so he decided to give me a discount we agreed to a fair price i think it was like three thousand dollars but i gave him another five hundred dollars when i found out that he's an amazon worker and you know i felt like it's just the right thing to do he was he was generally like you know nice guy uh, he was passionate about cars and, you know, I want to help him out. So, like, I just gave him another $500. You know, he really wanted me to take good care of it. The big question a lot of people may have, especially European viewers, is it legal to own a police car? Yes, it is legal. Even if it has a push bar. And push bar is basically this thing in the front, the bumper. Basically a thing to, like, hit people or, you know, stuff, right? Uh, it's called push bar. However, the car had aftermarket antenna with police lights which is a federal crime if you use it and you could go to jail for a long time and you're gonna get fined you know what's the best part this guy did, decided to show it off in front of a police uh, station but this antenna was actually really awesome because every time i would park the car uh, in any kind of parking lot i would see it from miles away it's just like an antenna sticking out i don't know if you can see it in this picture really well but you know it was it was pretty funny the thing is when i bought the car I didn't drive it. At the time, I only had a permit and I think it was expired. So we just parked it in front of my house. Here's a picture. I immediately sent it to all my friends. They freaked out. They loved it. It was really awesome. And I also didn't drive it the same day because um, I was really tired. I, tr I trusted the guy, which is very naive of me. However, the guy gave me something incredible. He gave me 10 years worth of maintenance records and original window sticker. The car had documented everything, every kind of uh, maintenance that has been done in the past 10 years on the car. All of it was documented. So you could tell that the, the car was, you know, taken good uh, care of, right? On the next day, I decided to, you know, basically pull the car apart and clean it inside out. And the first thing I discovered was that the driver's seat was covered with... <gasps> Or for the YouTube viewers, it was covered with ketchup. I didn't see it at the time because it was dark and it was, the car was parked in the shadow and I couldn't see it because the guy was in the driver's seat. But here's a picture. Imagine this, but in red. So apparently the previous officer that used to drive this car got... <gasps> or for the YouTube viewers got oofed. Instead of replacing the seat because it would be too expensive, the police uh, department decided to just put a vacuum plastic on it. So I was I was driving a biohazard. <laughs> the guy didn't mention that, by the way. Maybe the guy thought that I saw it and it just didn't say anything, but the guy never mentioned that. It was a pretty fun discovery. I pulled the car apart and I found a lot of 
really interesting stuff. Uh, for example, I found an identified USB stick, two bullets, and a pepper spray. Here are some pictures. Here's uh, here's the USB stick. I think it's like some Bluetooth or Wi-Fi stick. Here's uh, some other stuff I found in the car when I pulled it apart. And here are the bullets. One is 9mm and one 5.56. I'm no gun expert, but I'm pretty sure I'm correct here. Also, I found out that the car was bugged. And what I mean by that is uh, I found this friend. Look how big that thing is. <laughs> Just a giant, I think it's a cicada. So after cleaning the car, I decided to go to a nearby store to buy a seat cover because uh, obviously I didn't want to drive uh, like this. It's not blue. I, I made it blue just so I can show it on Twitch because otherwise I would not be allowed to show this on Twitch. Okay, imagine this button red. So I decided to go to a store to buy, uh, you know, a seat cover uh, for, for my car. And guess what? I got pulled over immediately right on the main highway the moment I drove out of uh, my neighborhood. I got pulled over immediately. Here's a picture. The reason why I got pulled over? Fully decked out police car, no license plates. You know what's the best part? I forgot my documents at home. So I didn't have registration. I didn't have a bill of sale. I didn't have anything that would verify that I didn't steal this car. However, the, the police officer was super chill about it. He understood the situation. He just told me like, yeah, just go back. Just go get the documents. And he let me off of a warning. Absolute legend. That that would have been bad. That would have been so bad. So I think I mentioned the, uh, like the um, the doors. I never locked my car. Is it irresponsible? Absolutely. But throughout um, uh, me owning the car for a year straight, it was only broken into once by some homeless guy who stole my UV light and uh, napkins. Big loss. For the record, if that makes you feel better, for all the you know, James, you should you should lock the car. Here's the thing. All police interceptors, uh, at least Crown Victorious, they use the same key. So if somebody wanted to actually steal my car, they would have done it with so much ease. Because a third key would work for my car, both to open the door and to start the engine. It's basically just so like, you know, the police office, uh, the way I understand it, so the police force could use uh, anybody's uh, car whenever they wanted to. If you think that that's irresponsible to not lock your car, it is. I'll lock your car. I, I lock all of my cars now, because like I said, you have to lock each door individually. Eventually, I managed to register the car, and guess what happened the same month? I was driving, and it, the car starts shaking, and I'm like, do I smell rubber? As, as I'm driving, 40 miles per hour. Uh, and I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pull over. Here's me filming the guy who, uh, you know, was picking it up. As you can see, still no plates. <laughs> But it has a backup camera. I installed it. I'm proud of myself. All right. I, I I did it myself. All right. Oh, nice antenna. Oh yeah, yeah. Here here you can here you can see the antenna. By the way, look how look how huge it is. The, the this thing is like you know turning on the light on this thing is super illegal. I mean to be fair, besides this wheel, nothing has ever happened to the car over the year of me owning it. Nothing ever happened to the car. I did replace the battery, frankly, and got it was a like a, the previous battery. I think was five years past its life. I think the only issue I ever had of the car like ever was probably the cold start. If I would leave it like in a cold, like, you know, uh, Las Vegas winter, like in a parking lot where it's cool, sometimes the engine would just make a, like an obnoxious sound instead of start up, unfortunately. But that's about it. Another issue I ever had of the car is that everybody's making fun of me with my dashboard on the car. Another, actually, I lied, I lied. The car actually had one little issue. Sometimes if I would be on an incline, sometimes the car would get stuck in P. But that's fine because P stands for police in this car, not for park, it stands for police. Uh, the reason for that, I think, is because uh, it was basically like a, a kind of emergency lock. So that, that's the only thing that has ever uh, happened. I mentioned that my friend uh, crashed into a pole. This one is actually pretty funny. So uh, my friend was practicing um, with the Crown Vic. Uh, like I mentioned, it does have pretty bad blind spots on the left and right. And my friend was just kind of getting used to it because I was not always driving it. Sometimes I would be a passenger, sometimes I just don't feel like it or whatever. And so my friend was uh, practicing with it. And so we decided to um, Park at the Walmart. It was empty parking lot. Like I'm, I mean, like no cars. We parked like you know, like um, in an empty area. And there's two kids, teenagers, like a young teenagers. There's two kids on their bicycles, flexing in front of me. They're doing wheelies, thinking that I'm a, I'm a cop. I'm, I'm, a, I'm in a passenger seat. I'm wearing sunglasses and I'm wearing my white shirt because like I, I wear it a lot. You often get confused for like a hotel uh, and a casino employee. Like th th this outfit. Basically, you know, it has a bit of a cop vibe. So anyways, so these two kids are, there, uh, uh, you know, flexing in front of me. Uh, we park, I get out of the car. And so these kids, uh, they come up to me. So so my friend realized that they're kind of like off the line uh, on the parking lot, just, just a little bit over the line. And so they're kind of like trying to like readjust as these kids are like asking me, it's like, oh, is, it, is this yours? I'm like, yeah, like, yeah. It's like, is that a, got a V8? I'm like, yeah. My friend 
backed into a pole. And these kids are like, ooh. And I'm like, don't worry, it's fine. It, and, and I said, it's gonna buff out. It literally did. The dent popped out the moment my friend drove forward a little bit. That thing, like this Crown Vic is a bulletproof. I told you, this car is a body on frame. That thing legit popped out, literally popped out that dent. It was so funny, like, it, it's just really funny because it happened in front of the kids and they, 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 they had a re genuine, like, you know, petrified reaction. And I'm like, ah, don't worry, just gonna buff out. I'm not gonna lie, when I told those kids that, I was just playing it cool. My friend just crushed the car, <laughs> you know? And I was just playing it cool, I was like, ah, it's gonna buff out. It literally did. Which which makes it just ten times funnier. I'm not, I'm not mad at my friend whatsoever. Like it, it's fine. There's a lot of other uh, funny stories that have happened to the car, but ultimately I learned a lot what I want in cars because it's it's my first car after all. The car brought so many smiles and so many laughs to so many people, especially everybody with sense of humor. Like like I said, you know I would get I would get stop like we would stop at the red light. People would roll down their windows and be like, Hey hey, is this yours? Are you Popo? Popo? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll be like, nah, chief. Judging by your reactions in the chat, you know, it brought a bunch of laughs to you. There was only one time some idiot threw a milkshake at it because they thought it was an actual uh, police car that belonged to the police department and they left a stain on it, but I just cleaned it off. You know, I just brought it to a car wash. But that was the only time I got in, like, in trouble uh, owning a police car, I think. The best part about owning that car was the fact that everybody was slowed down. So, in Las Vegas, everybody is speeding. Everybody is very impatient, but, like, nobody is, like, really endangering anybody. We have really big highways. Uh, like, we're talking about, like, six lane, seven lane uh, in some places even. And so, if people are going 10 miles over, like, I, I couldn't care less. Everybody's, you know, going over speed limit. The moment I show up, people go under speed limit. <laughs> and I overtake them and then they, they realize that I'm not actual a police officer once they see that uh, the license plate is not a police officer and they're like so do we speed up now or do we not why did I sell it not to get too personal but I kind of needed money at the time and the car like I mentioned is extremely inefficient every single time I would refuel it would be a hundred dollars uh, in, in Las Vegas and that thing was eating through gas like Californians eat through gas when they see a gas station uh, priced three dollars per gallon it was it was very it was very inefficient i sold it to a very nice guy who i believe is one of the security guards at the las vegas trip that's you know the main stories about the crown victoria i do have a couple of stories about my other cars uh if you guys are interested i can share them with you later that live stream i shared more stories about my other cars and in case you want to hear them maybe i will make a video on it so let me know by just leaving a comment like and maybe even subscribing also make sure to tune in into my live streams turns out a lot of people didn't know that i broadcast a lot of this stuff live including games and stories the link is down below.